Hello, and welcome to In the Frame, Exploring the DIA. Today we're going to look at what you might call a couple of hidden aspects of our operations. How we store our art, how we look after it, how we move it around the building, but also what we call deaccessioning how we dispose of objects that we firmly believe no longer have a place in the collection and what we do with the proceeds from the sales of these particular objects. Anytime you're walking through a great art museum like the DIA, you could be pretty certain that what you're seeing in the galleries is just a fraction of what the museum actually possesses, the proverbial tip of the iceberg. In the DIA's case, we have a little bit less than 6,000 works of art on view, which represents a tenth of our roughly 60,000 object uh, collection. But it's important to stress that of our great works of art, our great paintings, sculptures, uh, decorative arts objects, about 90% of those things are on view. And it's great to have works in the storage area so that when we lend out a great painting or a sculpture, as we do a couple of hundred times a year, that we have something that we can bring up into the galleries and replace the work of art that's gone, rather than having, in some cases of museums I've worked at, having to rehang the gallery to, to make up for, for the loss. But having said that, the other reason that we have so many works of art in storage is that we have physical conditions that we have to pay attention to. They are, generally speaking, light sensitive. Approximately two-thirds of our collection uh, consists of objects that are works on paper, drawings, photographs, those kinds of things, or textiles, uh, beautiful tapestries or moccasins or anything like that. And for every one of those objects that you see on view, if we want to maintain that particular presentation or installation, we need four, five, six, seven others in storage so that we can put them on view for a number of months and then take them on view so we protect uh, their long-term existence and protect them from the ill effects of overexposure uh, to light. And this is very much the case uh, with many, many uh, museums. The final category of objects in the collection that are in storage are objects that for one reason or another we don't really need anymore. And how we deal with that is something that I'll return to uh, later in the program. But whatever the reason is for objects being in storage, they need to have the same care and attention that objects that we put on view have. The whole science of storage is very, very important. How objects are handled, how they're kept, the condition that they're kept in, the kind of surroundings that they have are all very, very important and, and require a great deal of professional attention. One of the things that we have to do, for example, is to know where everything is. And as part of many museums' auditing process every year, the staff are handed a list of 20 or 30 works of art that they have to then go and find and show uh, to the examiners that we know exactly where this object is and that it's in, it's in perfect condition. Doing all this requires considerable professional expertise and museums have individuals that are registrars and technicians who spend a great deal of their time making sure that everything is shipshape. Today we're going to meet Terry Burkett, the Director of Collections Management at the DIA. It's his job to do much of what I've been talking about. One of the little known facts about uh, museums and storage is that it's very common for a museum of our size in particular to have very large collections and to only exhibit a portion of that collection. The collection that is in storage then uh, needs to be organized and also to be accessible for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons is, is that in order to be responsible caretakers, we need to be able to organize and monitor the collection in order to make sure that the collection is stable and also accessible at all times. Accessibility of the collection is an important touchstone for collection care. Uh, not only do we want the curator and uh, other museum professionals to be able to uh, work with the collection, but it's really the only way that we can ensure that the collection can be studied properly and that the information that is associated with the collection uh, can come to life. 
We frequently have visitors that are working with our curatorial staff that access the collections, study objects that we don't necessarily put on view, but that have some kind of significance or relevance to other works that are on view. In general terms, objects that are in storage have, a, have requirements uh, for their care that are not only based on national standards, but are also standards that the DIA has developed over the years. Some of these standards would include the temperature and humidity that we store objects at. We need a stable temperature. Most objects around 70 degrees and the, a stable humidity. Also, we tend to want to store objects of like materials together. Uh, you can imagine what would happen if a ceramic piece uh, is stored next to a metal piece and something happens in the metal piece contacts the ceramic piece. So in order to maintain the safety of the collections, we also store things together with their own kind. The collections management department is involved in both the organization and storage of the objects that we have in our collection and the installation of these objects in the galleries. We are intimately involved in working with the curators and conservators in achieving best practices both in storage and, as I said, in the way that we display the objects that the public gets to enjoy. We are two years into about a seven year long storage and deaccession project. The first phase is to work on organizing the collection so that we have better accessibility to it and we can research the collection. Curators will then make some decisions about uh, which objects are most pertinent to our collection and have the most relevance. The registrar working with the project is responsible for working with the curators and um, doing research on the collection, helping to organize uh, reviews of the collection, and working with auction houses and other outside parties. Once we've developed some internal ideas about uh, which collections we want to review and have done some review on them, we then bring in outside expertise to help us make judgments about the relevance of the collection and how well it fits into our collecting patterns. Overall then, what we hope to accomplish through this project over the next um, seven years is to have a collection and storage that's organized, well researched, and also to have been able to focus the collection on what's really important to the DIA and our presentation of that collection. Careful handling of the objects and movement of the objects is an important part of museum technicians' job. They are required to understand the physics of the objects, the way that the objects are constructed, and also how to support the objects on carts and other conveyances. We fabricate custom storage boxes and other devices that will support an object in storage and also um, provide a safe environment for that object. We make handling um, devices for objects that will help to reduce the amount of handling that an object incurs. Objects are stored in a neat and orderly fashion. We employ certain organizational factors when uh, laying out objects on a shelf. Objects are safely stored on shelves, racks, painting screens, and other storage uh, furniture. Shelves are padded and objects are marked in such a way that they can be um, found and utilized without actually having to move them. Our main goal in storage is to maintain a good environment for the objects that's both safe and provides accessibility
for those who would like to research